Welcome to another Little Big Planet karting tutorial, and in this particular tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can do away with the race entirely and try and make your own platforming adventure, perhaps in the style of um, Mario or Ratchet and Clank or uh, Sly Cooper, that kind of an idea. So let's get learning. Now this tutorial is going to be entirely based around uh, my level Cuboid Quest, um, so I highly recommend that you go and uh, play that level first before watching the tutorial because it will make a lot more sense. The level of course is co copyable, so you can take it to your own moon and play with all these features as much as you want. Um, but go and check out my planet, um, The Adipose, on PSN um, and play that um, before watching this tutorial because the whole thing will just don't make a lot more sense when I refer to different parts of the level. Now the level, as you should know, is full of blocks, and each block um, is covered with tags, because the player needs to know at any time what colour block he's on. And after a lot of experimentation with different positions of tags and keys and things like that, the, the most consistent result I got was having six tags on top of every block, and then on the player player's logic um, tag sensors um, to spot when they were in the correct place. Um, the, the, the problem was I couldn't find like an impact sensor that worked when the player touched a various substance. So at the end of the day at the end of the day, the tag sensors seem to be the ones that, that work the best. And each different block um, gives out a different colour tag. So here's, here's that, my blue tag block, and then below it we've got um, you know, a pink and an orange and all that kind of stuff. And all of these tag uh, sensors are hooked up to that big selector that you can now see in the middle. Which means that only one of these tags will be active at one time, because that's how a selector works. It, uh, only, only one of the outputs will ever be active, and you can change which one that is. Um, and on the right hand side you can see that we've got the um, a different handling tweaker coming out of each one so that means whichever color block the the cart is currently on it will handle slightly differently and this was the ba the main core of the gameplay that depending on what color block you were standing on you might be able to move completely normally or jump higher or not jump at all and all that kind of stuff but for all of them the handling mode the drive mode was tank because I it was the it was the close as I could get to a platforming feel um, in Little Big Planet Karting. Um, I believe I tried all the modes and tweaked with all the settings and things like that and there were a few I was umming and erring between even with the direct control one um, that had some possibilities but I felt this was the most consistent response because if you just have normal karting mode you, you've got quite a lot of momentum behind you uh, meaning you can roll off platforms and roll on platforms and also you can't turn left and right when you're standing still, which is obviously quite an important part of a, of a platforming adventure. So by using the tank mode, like we are here, I can turn left and right when I'm standing still, which obviously makes the platforms a lot easier to negotiate, and um, I, I turn down the momentum so that when I take the finger off the uh, accelerator, I stop absolutely dead, um, which again makes the platforms a lot easier uh, to negotiate. Um, although I, I just died while demonstrating that, but you, but you get the idea. So the first thing I'd really like you two guys to kind of have a look, good play with is the different ways of controlling carts here. I mean, it is a racing game, but if you look at uh, what I've put together here, if you look at the, the Little Big Planet um, community uh, planet, you know they they really kind of show that this karting isn't the only possibility in Little Big Planet karting. It is a 3D game editor. See what you can do. Um, now, uh, and as, if you, as I just go down the different handlings here, you can see I, do, I literally just tweaked some of these little uh, settings here, like hop power. Um, so the, the, the super duper high box, I think I turned it up to 200. The super duper low jump blocks, I think, was down to um, something like 30. And then, of course, I could even turn the hop off. And the other thing I've done with several of these is collect up um, little cartonators here. This is the one that uh, reverses your controls, which I'm, I'm sure will be a, 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 an object of frustration for some of you, but that was that was done simply by taking the output from the left stick, which is obviously the left and right, um, splitting it, um, and then reconnecting it together backwards um, gave us that reverse control effect. Um, for those of you that don't like those blocks, I originally actually had it re um, reverse 
missing the accelerator and the brake as well, but um, my beta tester told me that they uh, almost bit their hands off in rage, so <laughs> I made those a lot easier. Um, and then the last one here um, is actually the accelerator blocks, which appear very, very late on in the level. And the basic point of them is that they, they shoot the player forward as fast and uncontrollably, but that does actually allow them to do some very, very big jumps. Um, and that was the only one where I actually left it in the default karting mode, um, because I wanted that acceleration. There was no acceleration selector in the tank mode. And what we've got here, what we, what I did there with the batteries was I, I set the accelerator always to be on on those blocks and the brake always to be off, which meant that when the player touches those blocks, they zoom forward and there's uh, very little they can do about it. <laughs> now, um, all I, once I, I put together all my blocks and I was happy with how they worked, I um, saved them all into my objects, as you can see here, and then it was just a case of, of putting the level together. And if you want to copy this level to your moon, um, feel free to capture the blocks. There's a copy of all of them up in the sky and make a sequel. I'd I, I, um, be more than happy for you to do that and I'd, and I'd love to play it, see what you can come up with. Now um, these are our little tutorial guys, um, made out of stickers and a bit of blue wood and one of the functions I discovered recently, thanks to a very helpful person on forums, was that there is an automatic sticker cutout mode in Little Big Planet Karting and it's here, sticker template. So you choose your, uh, your, your substance and then you choose sticker template and then you choose a sticker and I was so excited when I saw this because it, it really makes stickers so useful because it gives you an automatic shape of that sticker um, straight away and you can adjust the, the thickness and the thinness, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller um, and, it, and it automatically sticks the sticker on there for you in, in a perfect outline, you know, it is not coming around the edge um, at all and if I made it um, completely thin then you wouldn't even see the, the the width side of it as well but that think about the possibilities of that with all the stickers that are actually in the game you've got architecture you've got plants you've got trees you've got animals you've got weird shapes you've got squiggles um, and all of these can be instantly um, put into um, 3D space on any piece of material you want, and of course you can actually then delete the sticker from it and be left with the shape. So if you'll find, if you're one of the people that's found it quite hard to cut out various shapes from the um, I I using the editor, and my, I include myself in that, why don't you then just find a sticker that's roughly the shape that you're trying to cut out? make that shape and then delete the sticker off it and you've then got that shape and of course you can um, then use these shapes and stick them together and merge and things like that but you can use this um, idea to almost create instant buildings and instant ag um, instant foliage if I uh, go in choose a substance choose a um, choose a material go down find a, a building of some kind and I've got an instant little bridge there and if I blew up that really really big I could have three tunnels at the bottom um, if I could do it um, so on the side of my tracks I've got some nice decorations but you do have to be careful which material that you choose because as you can see the cardboard texture comes through and there's quite a lot of textures where that pattern will be visible through the um, Sticker. Now, what I used on these with these ones was blue wood, uh, which actually from the little my little Big planet one days was something that uh, Comfer MC recommended as a completely flat and textureless material. Because as you can see here on the uh, on the bridge there, you can very much see that cardboard. Uh, pattern through it, whereas on this one um, you, you, you can't see it at all, um, which means that all the, the player is seeing is the sticker. Now each one of these guys I lit up with a magic spotlight. Now why is it magic? Because you can't see it. When you go into gameplay mode you cannot see the spotlight at all, all you can see is the, the light that it gives off. Um, so it just gives each one of those guys a little glow because I didn't want to be messing around too much with um, which way the light was coming from and all that kind of stuff. Um, so just sticking a magic spotlight in front of them worked wonders. Now this is the camera system. Um, I fiddled with this one a lot. Um, in th it, in, it can do a lot more than actually I ended up using in the level because I found that it was a little bit inconsistent so if any logic gurus want to have a little play with this um, be my guest. Um, but the basic idea is is that the player can adjust the camera to be in any one of four directions um, but the eye can also, as the game creator, can also manually control which way the camera is facing at any one time if I wish. Now what we've got here um, on, the ba on the left side is you've basically got four cameras, one pointing from the left, one from the front, one from the right and one from behind. And what we're going to allow the player to do is to be it to scroll between those cameras um, using the right stick. And if we then set each camera to have a, a short transition time, it'll just feel like the camera is rotating. But the important setting to make sure that we, we change here is that this follow position only. We don't want the camera to rotate with the player, because if it rotates with the player, then 
the, the camera view actually wouldn't appear to change. So the camera is actually going to rotate independently of the camera of which way the player is facing. And then all we did here was we connected up the right stick to a transmitter, and then that transmitter is then sent to a receiver, and that receiver goes into the cycle input of the uh, camera input and actually because it's um, a, a two-way input it, when the player presses one way on the the right stick it scrolls through the cameras um, down in order and when the player presses the other way on the right stick it scrolls through the cameras up in order so a very very simple way of actually getting uh, giving the player a lot of control over the camera so if I just come here um, to activate the camera which is uh, just on the front of this block here if I tap left it scrolls one way if I tap right then it will scroll the other way now I also put another system into the camera uh, tools whereby you'll notice here that if I when I scroll from the front it's central when I go to the side it's it's looking the way that the player would want to go um, so, and that was an automatic camera transition there when we got to the end of that block um, but there's also ways that you can make the camera look in front like the camera there that or that was an automatic shift so if, if someone was designing a, another platform using, using this camera tool it means that they actually have the power to always make the camera be just in front of the way the player would normally be looking that was another automatic transition there um, because um, if, if you put the player always dead in the center of your screen the player might not actually be able to see um, far enough ahead to see your um, hazards and obstacles and bad guys coming so having that little bit of extra control of not just having which direction is the camera coming from but which direction and how far ahead um, can you actually see was a um, was uh, an aspect that I was really really pleased of uh, pleased with and that that was simply done by pu um, putting these extra tags um, on, on the ground um, which then and some of them automatically um, swivel the camera and some of them automatically just kind of redirect the camera to let them see further ahead and not. Um, if anyone wants to know more about that camera system or wants to have a go at using it themselves, um, be my guest or um, send me a PM or a notification or something and, and we'll have a bit of a further chat about it. Um, it's not perfect but I was re it, 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 it does work well in, in the level. Um, down here we've got um, a black block, except it isn't a black block. It's one. Of, it's a. Uh, it's a checkered block because um, I haven't talked about materials much in my tutorials. But hopefully you have spotted when playing with materials that they have an input, and if you connect an input to that input, could be a switch, could be anything, you can turn it on and off. And when you turn it on or off, that will actually then allow you to select two colours, two um, brightnesses of that particular object, um, which is what I took advantage of on a couple of the blocks in the game actually. And then this is the. Um, the checkpoint system we've got here, we've got an OR input which is basically detects the player. Once the player is detected it uh, automatically sends off a transmission to activate the checkpoints here and it then turns the block on which makes it go all, all checkered pattern. And this is the checkpoint itself uh, which is controlled by a receiver but the important thing is is that that checkpoint was set to any. You know it wasn't a player box, it wasn't a, a horde box, it was simply set to any. But the very very first one in the level is set to players only, team one, player one. So when the game starts I know that the player will always always come out of that first checkpoint there and then the other ones I will activate as the player gets to them um, each time so I'm activating them manually which means the reason behind that is I always wanted complete control over where the player was going to spawn but of course you've got to make sure that you have the AI turned off like I just did there in the global settings if you don't have the AI turned off and you put more than one spawn point around they will start spawning out of them even if you set them not to do anything they will just sit there going hi um, Every time the player touches one of those checkpoints, it sends a transmission. That transmission is sent to this lovely little block in the sky, where you've probably I've probably made the biggest selector on the planet. Um, we've got 20 transmitter, uh, re sorry, receiver inputs on the left, and we've got 20 transmitters on the right. Each transmitter turns on another checkpoint, and because it is or spawn point, I should say, and because it's a selector, that means that there will only ever be one spawn point activated at any one time which basically means that every time the player reaches the next spawn point all the others turn off and just that spawn point is activated until they reach the next one and then that one is activated and all the others are turned off. It's a simple system but it worked um, very well. 
there is, um, and if you get halfway through the level to this point here, a shortcut in the level, because the level's quite long. Um, some people have told me that it took them about 45 minutes to complete it. Um, I, I like long levels, and I like levels that are challenging, but um, if you want a break, you get halfway through, and uh, the, the, the instructor man there will give you a secret code to put into your keypad um, that when you're standing on that very first block will automatically warp you halfway through the level. And again, if you want, you can take apart the logic there to see how that was done, but it's essentially done by activating one of those later spawn points and then automatically re resetting the player. Over here we've got our giant orb, our sphere. This is the goal for the player, which is uh, two of those um, battle domes um, stuck together with a hinge. And then at the back we've got a player um, detector, uh, which uh, as the player gets closer the, the box will open and the lighting inside will turn on. And there's also a game ender in there as well, so when the player eventually hopefully lands in the sphere, the game ends, there's lots of light around, lots of cheering and celebrations, and the player vows never to, ever to play Little Big Planet Karting or anything made by the Adipose ever again. But hopefully um, they, they will enjoy it as well. And I heard lots of good positive feedback on the level, so do give it a go. Now, music. Um, those of you that are, are, have, have played Little Big Planet 1 and 2 will be well aware of this, but those of you that are new because of karting might not know that some of the musics in the game, some of the music tools, um, you can customise the um, instruments in. You don't just have to take the music as it is. You can turn off the drums, you can turn on the trumpets, you can turn off the bass, you can have just the bass. You know, you can, it's completely customizable. And the other nice thing that you can do, and what I've tried to do in this level, is make the music match the different parts of the level. But because I'm using the same tune each time, just changing the instruments, there's never a jarring jolt of, oh, why did that music change? It just kind of raises in tempo when you get to jumps, and it drops in kind of pitch and, and mood when you get to like the more slower platforming section and occasionally we just add in a little extra melody and occasionally we, we take a little melody out for variety's sake but the idea is that the uh, the experience in the level is always changing using the music tools and I think there's about 10 customizable music tools in Little Blue Planet Karting and when and if you, if you if you can't find that perfect tune you're looking for try just going in some of those customizable ones and turning down everything except one instrument and you'll find some some melodies that you never knew were in the game that sound really effective by themselves now um how did i do the environments here well I've got a master controller in the level that is choosing constantly between one of five preset scenes to the level, which control the fog colour, which control the uh, lighting colour, and also control a, um, a danger tweaker. Because, although it looks like there's simply water on the ground, if we actually hover our little um, pop it across it, you'll see there's actually a huge hologram on the floor, which is why it's gone slightly blue here, and if I zoom out you'll be able to see that the edges of it go all the way to the edges of the level, and then right in the middle of it we've got these danger tweakers. And if you stick a danger tweaker on something and then make that object a lot bigger and a lot smaller, and you know, different things, you can actually get some really nice effects out of the danger tweaker. Now again, we've got a, a selector with five outputs, um, no input on the first one because that's the one that's there by default, and we've got these watercolour tweakers, as you can see, I'm showing you the different colours they're set to do, and as the player reaches almost like these kind of new stages of the levels, the danger tweaker changes, so instead of being gas it turns to fire, or instead of fire it turns to plasma, the water turns to a kind of matching colour to go with it, and the um, lighting matches up with it as well. Now one thing I found I did have to do with these is they they need the player to be in range for them to work pro properly. So what I did was I turned the detector up to a, to a cube size and then turned the max range up to 500, which is as big as it goes, which essentially means if I put these um, things in the middle of the level, wherever the player goes, he will be in range of them, and then I found this worked with no bugs and no problems. Because um, when, I, when I had it more localised, it would only work when the player was near it, and as soon as you moved away, the, the fog and the water and, and things would, would just turn back to their default colours. There's uh, loads more um, in the level, but I think I have um, said enough for today. Um, if there's other um, ideas in the level that you would like me to explain, drop me a line and I will more than happy to um, explain what I did there. But the level is copyable, so grab it, take it to your moon, um, take it apart, feel free to use the logic, feel free to use the pieces, make a sequel, make a full-on style Green Hill Mario Sonic type game, whatever you want to do with it, um, feel free, and um, then send me a link, because I'd love to see what you can come up. 
up with because I think it's a shame at the moment that Little Big Planet karting is being used almost exclusively for karting because it is effectively Little Big Planet 3D and there are a lot more possibilities to be done with this engine. Thank you very, very much for watching. Um, please give the video a like if you have enjoyed it, and uh, do go and uh, give the level a smiley face or a heart if you think that deserves that as well. Subscribe to the channel and do check out all the previous lessons and karting corners, and on the channel of course I've got lots of tutorials for other games as well, like Borderlands and Battlefield and stuff like that. Take care, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.